It's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do like a push up, <laughs> pop, spin, land. Yeah. When you're trying to change motor patterns, you need to break down the movement into the segments. We do the same thing with us. So before you do that, you can just stand still. And you can just do a little pop. So it's like stiff legs. You have stiff legs. So you pull your shoulder blades together, externally rotate your shoulders, and then elevate. Traps, lats, and voids, and shoulder mobility and shoulder stability. We've done a lot of upper body movements, so we need to be able to have mobile, strong, healthy shoulders as well. Externally rotate. Good. Nice. So if you're an athlete or individual, you can be you can see how much external rotation someone has by just putting them in, putting that putting them in that movement and seeing how much they can externally rotate that arm while not while not arching at their back. Some people can only get there, some people, you know, everyone's different. Hooked up. Boom. Kettlebell clinch pull up. Got it from Joe DeFranco. Uses it on, uses it on his MMA athletes. I thought it was perfect for what we're going to be doing. Her competition is going to require her to be in all types of compromising positions where she's not going to be able to dictate the grip she's going to have. It's not just going to be a normal bar. It's going to be weird round things like this. And things are going to move as well. So that's why we have this. I think it's a great variation you can use on really any athlete, any individual who's already done a lot of pull up variations already. So. Yep, so it'll be easier to grab it by the handles and harder to grab it by the actual ball. Yep. And I just want to get, she just wanted to get up by any means necessary. So we're not looking for a perfect pull up technique here because this is more conducive to what real life is. Just pulling yourself up on a weird shaped object. Like if you're a climber, you're probably experienced through this as well. Chest to the bar, chest to the bar, or to the, to the kettlebell, sternum to the kettlebell. And then you can hold as well. So now we get a hang. We get her in this position. She's got to stabilize, she's got to hold, I push her, make her a little unstable. Five. Well, I've started, Alex is continually pumping himself. Look at this, what are you talking about? What, what are you talking about? I'm doing my, well. I'm doing my job, I'm doing my job. Tomorrow? Are you doing it damn well? Ten. Single leg, step up drive to the people. We're starting from a kneeling start. She's gonna drive through with that front leg, drive into the box. So this is what you'd start with body weight. Just driving up, getting a single leg unilateral movement. But we did this last week as well, so we've already added a dumbbell. So we're doing dumbbells I want you to do body weight first because this is a different box height to get a feel for it. So developing unilateral strength is super, super important. Not just doing squats and deadlifts, it's all bilateral. Doing a lot of single leg work helps tremendously for strength, power, and speed. Maybe. Yep. Get your whole foot on the box. Making sure the soft tissue, soft tissue in her hand is healthy. Breaking up the, uh, the adhesions that are going to build up in her forearms, in her, arm, in her hands. Uh, most people have heaps of them already, heaps of scar tissue in there, all over their body, but particularly their hands, because what do we do a lot? We type a lot, we text a lot just constantly creating tension in our extremities. Make sure you feel stable in that position because one arm hanging can be a compromising position if you don't have the strength and mobility. So make sure, yeah, so you can, that's good. Oh, okay. Okay, that's not in the program. That's Lucy. But that is real tough. One arm holds. But having that off arm will make you more stable. So this is a progression of a one arm pull up is doing it with a, a hand on your forearm. Make sure you're, you're actively pulling through the kettlebell as well. Yeah, good. So that's what I want. That's stability right there. I don't want it just hanging in her joints. So that's a mistake sometimes that, you know, if you're not 100% aware or if you don't know that you can make, it's just hanging out in your joints, which you don't want to do. You can do a number of things with this. First, we're going to start off with a kettlebell smash on a quad. So you first, you're gonna wrap one foot around your leg and then you're gonna lay the kettlebell into that quad, okay? And you're gonna find the edge of the kettlebell and just lay into it, okay? But then you're gonna contract for five seconds and relax. So it's not just sitting passively here, but contracting the tissue and then relaxing. Slowly, just lengthening, getting out those adhesions. But the point is, 
to find those tight spots, breathe through them, contract the quad, and then relax. In a video I saw of Kelly doing this, he spent 10 minutes on each leg, just working down from upper quad all the way down to above the knee to the VMO. If you have knee pain, I've found in clients that have had knee pain, laying on that VMO really helps. But keep breathing. Breathe, breath control is super, super important when you're trying to lengthen tissue. When you start hyperventilating, you just you become you get into a sympathetic state, and your, your muscles start tightening up. So long, deep inhales and exhales. Through every. All right, you stay right there. All right, so if you want people watching it, they need me on it. So normally I'd say no to this, but Alex came to me, had a good idea. What are you laughing at? Critage. Um, so yeah, I thought that um, it's a great idea. And good on him for coming up with the idea to um, put yourself out there, put it on camera's not easy. Not everyone likes doing it. For me, I enjoy doing it. I think it's part of my life now, but I think it's done real well. So I'm actually excited to see how this goes. So what the, the production you guys do, um, this will be the only time I'm in this video, so hopefully you guys enjoy this content. You get a lot out of it because it is different type of training. But it's good to see the training, so yeah, I could take it though. But I, I don't what think would you do with Lucy? <laughs> tell, tell them what would you do. Do you know what if I can He'd do? Squat him. I'd hit him. I'd hit him. Thrust him. I'll pal of him. I'll do the fundamentals. The big six. Ebook out now. Woodfordshot.com. Twenty nine ninety five. Man. Nineteen ninety five. Nineteen ninety five. Nineteen ninety five. So I called the pizza ninja. Yeah. What would you call these other pizza ninja? Because I love pizza. Okay, it was a pizza. And how many people? How many ninjas rep pizza? I wouldn't have a clue about what a ninja. What is a ninja? What well, don't I know? Why are we doing this? Gymnastics. This is a like a typical. Lucy's X gymnastics. This is a typical gymnastics movement to get into a front lever position where your legs are fully extended. Okay, so the first one is just holding into a tuck position, which she was doing before. And this is just core strength, your ability to hold your body weight in space under body weight load. Pull up grip transfer. So we're going from, we're transferring from bar to bar. So I thought, how can I incorporate some type of like monkey bar movement, um, like you're a kid at the playground, just going from bar to bar. Well, we can, Lucy will show just transferring from bar to bar. I don't mind which one she does. She can go front, side, back. I want them all because different stimulus, different variation. Chaotic farmer's walk with fat grips. Joe DeFranco, shout out to him for, for using this. People think, oh, this is kind of gimmicky training. One of the best strength and conditioning coaches in the world, Joe DeFranco, uses this stuff. I just emulate it to apply it to the situation and context we're within. So, Lucy, pick, pick up the, this is how we do it. We pick up, we just wrap the bands in between the plates, double wrap it, and then attach fat grips to the ends. The fat grips will hang and drop. Every step she makes, it's going to move. So it makes it a chaotic movement, right? Every bounce, it makes it a little bit harder, a little bit easier. It's not just a static hold with dumbbells or kettlebells. But, and we want this because that's going to be the nature of a competition. Once again, we need more advanced methodologies, training implementations to stimulate appropriate physiological adaptation. Shout out to Jordan Potts for suggesting this to me. If you're in Noosa and need a strength and conditioning coach, Jordan Potts is your man. He used to be an intern here. He's a great dude. We're about to come up to Noosa. By the time you guys watch this, we already have done the Noosa workshop. But um, shout out to him. He suggested this one to me because in creating this program, it's not just me, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants and I, I talked to a lot of, a few people who I trusted about structuring this program and he is one of the people who gave me uh, some advice. Look at that end, look at that end. You just need there, you just need another, what, 10, what, five seconds? You can do five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, good. Mentally, I gotta give her like a goal. Like if you don't give numbers, you don't give 10 second countdowns, you really fuck with people mentally. So if I can give her like a point, get to here, then it makes it much more like mentally manageable. Get knees low, knees low, hips, hips down, hips down, good. good. All right, let's go. Pull, 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 pull. Nice, Lucy. Let's go. Slow. So I drop her knees low to the ground, she has a low center of mass. It's like you, you, you train like every day right now. I don't want to, I, between, between me, between me and you, between me and you Woodfords and Chaz, I'd rather she have a rest day. I'd rather she have at least one rest day. There's many ways to do this. This is not the only method. This is not, I'm not the, the messiah. I'm not the king at this. I'm not going to say, yeah, you are. I'm not going to say that. Um, but we'll see what happens.